Yes. Welcome you all to Team 2. What is Team 2? We all know communication and leadership are the key skills for job in the corporate world. The objective of Team 2 is to promote communication, collaboration, public speaking, social and leadership skills. We have two streams at present, communication stream and technology stream. Today, we have a technology stream presentation by an industrial expert. Why Team 2? Through Team 2, we are connecting new generations. Team 2 is for collaboration. There are a lot of experience within the group itself. People within the community can help each other and give technological direction. Team 2 is for communication. We have planned approach for communication and skill development with projects. Team 2 is for leadership. We are interacting with leaders as a guest speakers to our sessions and provide a chance for discussing with them. So set aside an hour every weekend for self-development. Please join and grow with us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pia. Uh, let me call Mr. Fadil to introduce uh, uh, Padmanabhan. Hey, uh, I'm Padmanabhan. People call me Paddy. So I have uh, 25 years of uh, industry. Yeah, I will uh, uh, just hold I will uh, ask somebody. So I will introduce you. So, Mr. Patnaban B is working as a senior principal engineer in Verizon Data Services India Private Limited. He is a techno functional expert with experience in database, data science, big data, data warehouse, and cloud computing. Mr. Parry did his Master of Computer Applications in Computer Science from the University of Madras and has been working in Verizon for the last 18 plus years. He has led roles in successfully implementing complex database systems and data warehouse systems for various wireline and wireless projects of Verizon. And today he is talking about big data use cases and Internet of Things. We are very honored to have you here, sir. Over to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you have already introduced myself and uh, shortly I will tell like uh, myself, I am uh, Batmanabhan, uh, people call me Paddy. I am working in a company called Verizon. I have total 25 years of experience in IT, mostly in the data area. So currently I am working as a data engineer in big data technologies and in-memory technologies, Spark and uh, Hadoop kind of environment. Uh, so today I want to touch Mostly, uh, I'm not going in depth into the big data in the technical area, but I'm going to just go on overview of what is happening in the big data uh, around the world. And I'm going to show you some of the use cases in big data and uh, related to I IoT, I'll be explaining some other things. Uh, okay. Uh, I think most of you know about big data, right? So uh, we know the evolution. So the evolution is from DBMS, database management system. That's a single layer of data. Then we went for a RDBMS, relational database, tables and columns, right? Uh, so kind of like uh, you have a structured uh, kind of data, like you have table, column, you join together, get the data and you have several uh, front-end tools to get the data and show it in your screen. So there is a lot of uh, um, data cannot be stored, but if uh, we are able to store that also, it is going to be, uh, it's not going to be economical uh, right at that time because the uh, storage and memory was very high. So in the evolution right now, like uh, around like uh, 10 years right now, like we have the big data coming into the market. Like we have, we have the data coming into different streams. So social networks and uh, technology, satellites, lot and lot of data is coming into. And at the same time, uh, the actually like our the memory and the storage is also becoming very cheap. So that's what the evolution of big data is coming uh, very fast and. Uh, it is coming into most of the industries right now. They have started uh, using the big data. 
for their analytics purpose actually so big data not only structured data it can be also unstructured data so your twitter feed or it's coming from any unstructured form of data right your satellite your coming from geographical data or some data related to social process so these data right uh, are uh, might be unstructured also so data big data you can store it is structured as well as unstructured and um, you can store it in several means right uh, currently uh, we have a distributed system so we can store it in different uh, systems clubbed together we can store it uh, in hadoop kind of environment hdf storage and you can retrieve it efficiently so that is a advantage of the big data so what is it big data is a very big structured and unstructured data and you are retrieving it through several means and mostly like open source has come as very uh, important thing uh, evolution in the last 10 years right so once the open source evolution has come more and more tools are coming in the big data area to analyze and for analytics purpose okay. so there are four um, things we uh, use in the big data okay if you talk about big data first thing is the volume its volume, volume is going to be very high right so uh, you, uh, you, you can use uh, this data like volume is going to be petabytes of data initially like when we started our career right a terabyte of uh, data in a database production database is going to be very huge oracle kind of environment the cost is also very high at that time so oracle kind of database is sql server those are databases are there so now uh, the volume is going to be very high uh, but we are able to store it in the hadoop kind of environment hdf storage and we can retrieve it right so this this kind of that, that is the first v that is a volume the second is a variety so now we are get a different varieties of data as i already explained might be like structured Structured is nothing but what we did uh, get before through our DVMS relation database, through tables and um, uh, columns and uh, rows, columns like that. If we retrieve the data, so those are unstructured data, and unstructured is nothing but what our data is it as Twitter feed, your Facebook uh, data, or something which is social networking data. Those are all unstructured data. So you can store structured, unstructured kind of data, both. So the variety of data is different actually over here, right? So the third thing is veracity. So veracity is nothing but, like if you store the data, you need to understand whether the data is accurate, whether the data will be useful. So these kind of things we need to first check, right? So when you store a big data for your analytics purpose, this veracity is a very um, important one we need to check it out. Then the fourth one is the velocity. So the velocity is also important. How quick you get the data, right? So um, just think like some of the um, uh, some of the analytics cases, right? The credit card swipes and all those things, right? So you need to check it out uh, very quickly because then only if there is any fraud or something, then you can analyze, right? So now uh, the market is also becoming uh, like a lot of analytics are happening so most of the customer centric um, actually revenue is generated by this analytics so if you see right so uh, i i worked in a use case sometime before so like in a chatbot uh, in a website you enter some auto uh, say a person is going in checking some automobile uh, uh, some automatic car or something he's checking in automatic uh, website so in the current time itself, what kind of car he is looking into, those things, he, if he uh, looks into the, uh, types in the chat bar, those information directly goes to the, uh, through AWS or some kind of uh, environment and comes as advertisement for him again in his screen itself, right? So it goes through several things. He goes through streaming and it goes through uh, store the data, they do the analytics, and again, whatever he is checking, right? Right away, it comes to the screen. So, that kind of analytics has come right now, right? So, in the big data, also, a lot of analytics you can do, right? So, uh, it can be like that one uh, velocity of the data. Some of the data you can move 
uh, might be nightly if it is a data warehouse in the environment. Some of them you can uh, look into it, some finance reports or something. Do it in uh, three months, once quarterly. So uh, those, those kind of things are uh, also can be done actually. And if it is going to be partly real time, right? I won't say fully real time, partly real time also, you can uh, do that actually, near real time using the big data. So there are several big data technologies in the market right now. So if you see here, I have put, uh, some of the things I have put into here actually, okay. So here you know how to pass it all, right? It's a distributed computing, uh, like previously, like if you take a database, it is going to be one single machine or uh, if it is an Oracle uh, rack or something, right? Maybe a multiple memory uh, connected to a storage kind of thing. But Hadoop is kind of like you have some 2000 machines clubbed together. With, uh, the advantage is all the memory is clubbed together, all the storage is clubbed together, and the data is also stored into different uh, nodes over there. And the might be like if you use the 1000 node, 1000 nodes, the data will be in some other nodes, the data will be shared so that. Uh, the data loss won't be there. So these are some of the advantages over there. And the memory is also, it's clubbed together. You can use the memory into a different purposes, like uh, you can process it very quickly. All these things are coming together in a Hadoop kind of environment. So I'm not going into uh, details very um, technically right now. So I'm not going to explain you how the data is stored how uh, we are going to retrieve and how we are retrieving all those things initially how it evolved so all those things i am not going to say maybe we will have a different session for that i'm going to briefly give you like what are the different components you have right now right so now uh, you have spark so initially when the hadoop uh, came right the, the, the way of retrieving the data from the hadoop ecosystem is through a concept called map radio right Map reduce go through mapper and reducer concept. Might be in the next session I will take what it is. But uh, though uh, that is kind of a uh, time consuming one, and it's also it depends on some of the data which has to be there in the disk while retrieving, right? So it is going to be um, time consuming process, and the code is also very uh, like uh, we have to write a complex code to retrieve the data and all those things. If you are going to use the languages like Java, and all. but there is a way like you have tools like uh, database like tools like Hive. It uses internally the uh, map reduce kind of algorithms and retrieve it. So those kind of uh, things also available in the market. So now uh, coming to how it is evolved from a uh, map reduce, and now we have something like in-memory database, right? So I'll just give an example of spark right so what what we do in the spark right as i told like thousand machines are clubbed together right now and you have memory right so it's a distributed memory, uh, computing right so now previously if you want to play into a database right you run a query and you retrieve data from the database it's a SQL kind of language so now you you are writing some uh you have to do some complex processing you need to hit the database several times you need to retrieve the query it is going to take a lot of time right the processing the transformation and all those things is going to take time now in the spark in your own right you are going to hit the database only once since it's a distributed thing you partition the data into different nodes and you take the data and you put all the data in the memory and you process in the memory that is advantage you only once you are hitting the database you are not hitting the database several times you are processing all the data in your memory so in this way right so it's a distributed company computing it's very fast we have several advantages over there and spark uh, the several languages can uh, interact with spark we have java scala and python so all these can interact with spark so this in, in memory computing is one of the key uh, big data thing right now so in the market we are most of the industries are using spark right now so then yeah, i i will explain you about the no sql databases so previously i told all the databases are structured so if you see the so uh, i'm able to uh, somebody tell me like uh, you are able to hear me 
I am just speaking. I am not uh, able to know like uh, I am. Everybody able to hear me or not? Yes. Can you tell me like this, okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So now, um, okay. So I told you the evolution of the databases, right? Uh, so you have you have some DBMS to RDBMS. So RDBMS also. It's uh, like uh, cost uh, licensing uh, uh, databases we had, uh, Oracle, SQL Server, those kind of databases. Then the next evolution came like we had the databases like Postgres, MySQL. So all are open source kind of uh, thing which happened in the market. So mostly it does uh, did whatever the Oracle and SQL Server did, right? So mostly it did that. But the evolution is in the next stage, right? Uh, you 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 have to um, go for NoSQL databases. NoSQL is not only SQL, so it's kind of like you store the data into different formats. Lot of NoSQL databases are in the market, and it behaves differently. Okay. So previously, like you you go for a WhatsApp chat, right? Your message is something you are typing it, and it's not kind of relational. You are just seeing the data and put it into. So in that case, right, uh, uh, no SQL databases might be handy, right? So everybody know about acid complexity in a database, right? So if you say uh, acid complexity, one of the main uh, thing, right? Uh, uh, like uh, we call it like uh, mostly like the data, right? If you go for a banking transaction or something, right? So what happens is like if you insert the data and the two or three persons insert the data or update the data, the same row at the same time, right? So what happens is RDBMS tackles it very efficiently. How it uh, tackles it actually? So it has a concept called logs, right? So based on that, if you insert happens first, it inserts it, update happens. So another update also happens simultaneously. It will put a log and it will uh, update it. Simultaneously, one after another in a sequence, right? But these kind of things cannot be handled mostly in the NoSQL databases. So this online transaction processing might be difficult over there, but it is evolving, right? But uh, in case of in case of there are several uh, things, right? You you can store some data, uh, say told like you type something in WhatsApp. Or some of the unstructured data, you want to put it as a key value, pair, and unit directory. So all these kind of things, right? It is possible. There are uh, actually NoSQL databases like HPS, MongoDB, and Cassandra are all very good uh, NoSQL databases. We can store lots of lots of data. It's our open sources. So I'll just give an example of Cassandra. is a very good uh, thing. It goes with the partition console. It is stored into a distributed kind of environment, and it can be retrieved in a very efficient way, right? And the actually like the loss of data and the actual uh, retrieval of data, all these things are handled very efficiently. But the main problem in the NoSQL databases is you cannot put the joins, right? Joins is a problem because the relation databases you go by a relational data model. And you store the data, but in Cassandra you need to go by a different kind of method. I I will take a separate session for that. Actually. How you store the data in relational and how you store the data in Cassandra kind of NoSQL databases, right? So NoSQL only main thing is the consistency, right? So you update and insert the data. NoSQL databases cannot handle it efficiently. So one of the asset properties consistently cannot be. Maintained properly using NoSQL. It's a semi-consistency kind of model. Then the uh, next thing comes right. Uh, you have Tableau, which is a visualization tool, which is very much uh, needed, right? You have analytics right now. You do on top of uh, big data, right? So what are the main uh, analytics you can do? You can go for a descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, descriptive analysis, analytics. So these kind of things you can do, right? So descriptive is mostly uh, tools like Tableau, ClickView, and all these tools, right? We can do that, right? And I can also explain like tools like Talent, ETL tools, moving data from different do one uh, data from huge data from one area to another area, maybe a database or Hadoop, and all those things, right? 
at the ETL tools also coming into picture, right? And as I told like R, Python, so these support EIM, right? Machine learning. So machine learning is a separate topic. We need to go for a different day for that. But machine learning is one of the main thing. Like R supports a machine learning kind of thing. It has a lot of machine uh, learning algorithms, your uh, random forest and your logistic regression. All these things are handled through R language efficiently. And you can also use Python, right? Python also uses the machine learning thing very efficiently. And elastic search, okay. So what is elastic search? It's a kind of a uh, method you store the data, right? And uh, yeah, I won't call it as a database, but it's a database kind of environment. So you store the data and retrieve the data doing it so due to different method you store. And the algorithm which you retrieve the data, it is very fast actually. So previously you do a UI and so you take a data from the RDTMS, you do a a group by and all those things, it is going to be very slow, right? Uh, might be like if you go for a product, like Amazon product kind of uh, uh, web screen, right? Uh, UI. So it's going to be like a lot of use, millions of products will be there. So group the products and uh, doing all sort of things is going to be very uh, hectic if you go for a UI, right? Uh, so yeah, UI against the database. So UI against Elasticsearch is going to be very fast. Okay, the same kind of joints and all those things you can do, but you can do all sort of analytics, all the group based aggregation can be done over elastic search. So here, last thing I will come here, Presto, right? Presto is kind of a tool, right? Uh, it, uh, the main advantage right now in the market. So initially we had uh, uh, the data visualization tools, right? If you I have to connect, you have to connect to one single database, OBAE or something related to Oracle, right? Uh, Oracle uh, gave the product for us. So there and all you have to, if you are going to connect to Oracle, you going to connect to Oracle. But by, I don't know, like I worked 10 years before it has been evolved or not. But now uh, Tableau, Tableau is something like you can, if you have uh, to connect to different databases, you can connect together and you can retrieve the data and put it into one reporting data from a different uh, databases you can put it in one report actually okay the presto is a kind of thing so it is main advantages of presto is it is used in the big data environment so instead of taking the data from the database right it keeps the files of the underlying database you store like in any databases the you see the data from the database but it's actually stored in the files right so it keeps the files and takes the data, so it is very fast. Presto kind of thing. It is an open source. It comes into market, and we can use it also. It efficiently we can use it. Plunk is something like you use it as a log tool, and um, you can see a lot of logs from the UI. You can put the logs into Plunk and do lot of data analytics on top of it. And Kafka, actually, it's kind of a streaming one, right? You put the data, you uh, you have processing over there and you can capture it. Different kind of environment. You have Genesis in AWS doing the same thing. And you have several tools in that uh, area, right? So, next thing I'll go. So, I covered all the tools right now, right? So, you have big data, you are doing analytics over there. So, what kind of analytics we are doing over there, right? So, here, uh, just I'm giving like I took some three industries. What is the main uh, use cases you are doing there with the big data? Okay, so I'm uh, covering that here. Okay, so in the telecom, what is the major thing? Okay, so it's a customer churn is the main thing. So in any industry, right, the customer he might choose if the particular uh, provider, uh, not only telecom, any other provider, right, uh, in any retail industry. If the provider is not good, he jumps to the different uh, customer, right? Customer jumps to a different vendor, okay? So a different company, he goes and gets a uh, product from them, right? So now this is a churn, right? In telecom, it is very huge, right? Now, like, if you are not able to provide the customer efficiently, then they are going to go away. They are going to uh, go for a different uh, person who is going to give you the same kind of technology, right? So now uh, we are sitting from the home, Wi-Fi is a main thing over here. 
So if your Wi-Fi is very slow or some kind of you face lot of uh, fiber cuts or something, so internet is going on, uh, slow cuts uh, or sometimes. So these kind of things, right, happen then uh, you go to different customers. So uh, myself, I changed the three customers. I went to Mac, I went to Act. Right now I have a reliance again. Okay? So why? The different uh, people are different problems, right? So the main thing is you are, there is a, a thing like uh, that, that is a problem. So you have like, you raise, raise a complaint, right? The complaint also like uh, should be handled efficiently. So they have to, uh, your customer centric, the particular company should be, right? So all these things are there. So all the data, the customer related data and the telecom, right? It is stored in the big data. So if you see here, right? So your customer related information, like your uh, phone number name and your related information, how much uh, uh, data you are using, how much uh, speed you are using, and uh, what are, how many complaints you have made. So uh, you are making regular complaints also. So all these information are fed into the big data, right? And they do analytics on based on that. And based on that analytics, they will just find out like who is the customer who is going to go out, uh, might be uh, due to different reason, right? Uh, who is, uh, you can say like, so who is going to, uh, who, uh, who is complaining more or something like that, they are actually going to go out, might be there is a chances, right? Chances to go out. So those kind of things, we do it through big data, analyze it and reduce the customer share. This is the main thing every telecom and all the retail customers do, right? That you have to reduce the chain and you need to understand the here, if you see, right, the two kinds of data has to be analyzed. One is your personal info of the customer as well as the customer, uh, the services the customer uh, is using, right? And the billing. So all these things, products, billing, and the customer related info, you have to plug together and you have to find out like complaints and all those things. So you have to plug together and find out whether the customer is the chances of going out. If it is high, then you have to go for different things in the telecom industry, right? You have to do upsell or you do to do a cross sell or give him some promotion. So all these things you need to do. This way, like telecom industry, big data, Telecom is a customer chain is a one main thing. Okay. So if you go for financial sector, financial sector is right now evolving, right? I want to say most of the things they have used in, uh, they are started using the financial sector, the big data thing. They are slowly coming into that. If you see the data in telecom and all, right? Uh, it's not mostly, it's some part is customer centric, but most part is not the customer centric. If you lose the data, then there won't be that much uh, problem or something. The data is something like not accurate. There are, there are, if you see like there are some two to three kinds of data, right? So what are data you get it from the social media, media right? That won't be that much uh, uh, important or that much important. But the next one is your telecom kind of, that's a semi kind of thing, right? Some of the data is more important. Some of the data is not important data. But if you go for a banking, right? The banking, every data is important related to your money, right? So if you lose something and you will be in trouble. So here, right, in the financial sector, they have started in the areas like loans and all, right? So while giving the loans and for credit card cards and all those things, they have started using it. So if the risk management, right? Before giving the loan, what is the customer history? So how he has you efficiently, if he has taken any other loan, whether he has given the loan very clear, correctly and he is doing, um, how he is maintaining his credit record and all those things are efficiently handled. All this data, like if you see India, right? It's a one, one point, it might be like 1.3 billion, right? So in this population, something like, you have something like, 50 million people have bank accounts, right? All these people data, credit history, all of them is stored and based on that, they give the loan. So different banks are there in the market. So the bigger uh, uh, circle shows like 
the bigger level of banks, what is the actual capacity, like how big it is, right? And how much uh, fault they are having actually, fault related to the loans, right? Maybe like 2% to 1%, almost okay. More than that, it is going to hit you, right, in long run. Okay, so next thing is healthcare. Healthcare, we are doing uh, going ahead in healthcare right now, right? You store the data like lot of uh, data um, so, uh, related uh, to the uh, healthcare industry, right? medical records and all that. Right? Employee health health records, right? Uh, so all these health records, which kind of millions of records, right? And due to different uh, uh, diseases, all these are stored together. Maybe they won't uh, um, they will give you the information of the patient or something, but the related to disease, all the data is there in the big data right now, right? So based on that, they do a lot of analysis. So they do some research on cancer, diabetes, and all those uh, things. And they will come out like, what are the precautions you need to do? Where, when, how, in what stage the particular uh, patient is there? So all these things, what kind of uh, uh, medication you can give, all these are analyzed with the, due to the big data. So healthcare industry is coming. So if you see the healthcare, healthcare industry, right? So the main thing is uh, it will grow. You if you know like there is thing called augmented reality, right? That is going to be very hit in the healthcare industry. I will explain it. Might be in next session or something like that. But uh, this is also picking up. Like big data is also picking up. In it. Okay, distributed computing. So if you, I already explained you, right? So if you go before, it is going to be one single computer, you install your database over there, and uh, uh, several person hit that particular computer, right? So the memory and uh, the uh, storage is going to be costly, right? So it's kind of a, uh, once the evolution of distributed com computing, right? So the Hadoop kind of environment, and if you yeah, want to doctor right the because of the memory and uh, uh, your storage is becoming very economical as well as um, it's kind of you store the data into a distributed way so you can retrieve the data fast all these are advantages of distributed computing right so hadoop kind of uh, thing and hdfs kind of storage so all are uh, very precious right now so the big data is evolving like that and you have also like a lot of social networking data, all the sort of data from different uh, moves, right? So if you see, uh, you get the data from different devices, I will explain you the IoT kind of stuff also. But these and all come uh, actually uh, um, resulted in distributed computing, right? So it's a very good thing. So uh, in another, uh, 10 years uh, distributed computing is the number one, going to be number one. And uh, we are going to leverage more and more uh, big data and uh, a lot of analytics going to be done over there. Okay, Hadoop ecosystem, right? So Hadoop is one of the, the ecosystem I told you. Like in the top of the distributed computing, you know, we have several things over there, right? So you have several nodes and all, right? So how it is managed, right? There is a method to do that. I am not going to explain you currently, but so the resource management and all those things are taken care of by YARN. So we call it as a YARN in a Hadoop environment. We have all the stores, files, and all in a name node. They call it as name node, data node, and all those things. Now, then that we will see it later. Okay. So the YARN is a resource management thing. So if you hit the CFS, so which node to take the data, which node has the data how to retrieve it, where to store, which node to store the data, all these things are happen. Like it goes through YARN. Resource management, it takes care. So like also I told, right, that the previous concept is MapReduce. It is evolved into different ways right now. So we have MapReduce, Hive uses test kind of engine. I will explain you what is this later. So those kind of things are evolved, right? So Thrift is a kind of a server. So you use it in uh, Spark, and uh, you can connect uh, to the Hadoop uh, kind of IE and the through thrift kind of server. So it's a kind of different method. 
So you can hit the database through your JDBC connection or script server connection. So it is used in that. Hedgecard lab is nothing but while inserting into that, it's a kind of database you can insert through that. Actually, you have several tools that should be high. Uh, we will have a separate session for that. We have UZ uh, kind of workflow uh, to run the scripts in the Adobe environment. Scoop is a database uh, uh, movement, actually, data movement thing. You can pull the data from a database, you can put it into Hive and uh, our Hadoop environment. So all these things can be done, right? So then uh, you had HBS, it's kind of a, it's kind of a uh, NoSQL database it's for um, Hadoop, right? So these are some of the Hadoop components, but it's evolving, lot and lot of people are there in the uh, market. So it don't be like one day we cannot uh, have time to do that, but we'll, we'll, I will explain you in subsequent sessions about the Hadoop issues. So the data is stored, right? So data is stored, uh, you have unstructured structured data, right? So the evolution came from your databases, right? So then your data warehouse came. You people don't know about uh, data warehouse. What is a data warehouse, right? So data base is a OLDP system, right? The OLDP is nothing but your online transaction processing, your bank transaction happens, right? or your uh, order is going to happen in a supply chain management system or something like that, right? So it's a kind of sales system or a lot of things, orders and all those things. They are transaction mode, right? So the online way, put the orders and they work on it. Uh, these are all online transaction process. Instant, think of it, right? If you have a finance data, right? So you want to find out like, uh, what are, um, bank like what our transaction happened which bank uh, division might be a bank has several uh, several several um, it has several uh, it is distributed into several locations right it has several branches so you want to find out like which branch has actually like uh, uh, done a lot of uh, transactions or which bank has done efficiently uh, much uh, taken most of the loans and it has increased the revenue right so those kind of things if you want to see you if you go and hit the OLTP kind of database right uh, the grouping and all those analytics is going to great time take time as well as your online transaction processing also happens at the same time right so that's what the evolution of data arrows came right the a data arrows is nothing but you pull the data from the OLDP databases, put it into data warehouse as a nightly job or something initially. Right now we have several tools. I'll explain you later, but uh, uh, nightly job, you pull the data and put it into a data warehouse system and you do all sort of uh, analysis over that, right? So this is a second level. So from OLDP to data warehouse, then came the big data, right? You have several node, how do kind of system, so we we worked in a, uh, actually like uh, in uh, like we worked in 2000 nodes or something uh, world's uh, largest uh, Hadoop environment. So it's a kind of the main thing over here, right? The Hadoop environment. It's not like 2000 nodes or 4000 nodes. How efficiently you govern them, right? The data governance is a major part. You don't know like so 4000 nodes you have. The, the 4,000 node of Hadoop system is maintained by uh, several, in the whole world, several people use the particular nodes, right? The, uh, people sitting in Australia will use some other node, people sitting in India will use some other node. You have to govern it properly, the data governance process, right? How the data comes in, where it comes in, how it goes out, these are all very important things. So in uh, this is kind of a Hadoop, with that big unstructured and uh, structured data, right? That comes to a data lake. Data lake is nothing but a Hadoop kind of ecosystem. We call it as a data reservoir or a data lake or something like that. All the structured, unstructured, you put it over there and govern it properly, right? This this data, you do take it for machine learning, your analytics and all sort of things, right? So this is the data lake. So the evolution from database, data warehouse and Currently, we are in data lake stage, right? 
okay uh, i am going fast or i am going slow right now how much time we have yeah another 15 minutes that's okay 15 to 20 minutes okay yeah okay no another uh, 5 to 10 minutes i will close we will have some questions for them okay right now i will just go fast okay so spark uh, Spark is nothing but a in-memory database. I already explained you uh, the Hadoop system. You have the memory uh, shared together, but you are not using that memory efficiently, right? So uh, you can put Spark over there in uh, distributed computing. You can put it top of Hadoop also. Yarn handles that uh, in the nodes, right? And it uh, uses the memory to process it. So it's kind of like you could don't go to disk. You put all the processing in memory and make it faster. So we will have a separate session on Spark, okay? And I'll go to, I already explained about NoSQL databases. So you go for only the consistency is the main problem over here. Lot of uh, databases are there. Document oriented is MongoDB, it's kind of stored is in the, in, in the JSON kind of structure. And your key value kind of a database, Redis and something, you have a key and you know about map, right? It is kind of a map kind of function. You have a key, it's a value assigned to it. And white column store is nothing but tables and columns also you can store. It's kind of Cassandra or some of the examples of that. And a graph database. Uh, graph is one, one of the main thing I will explain you. Uh, later is Neo4j and all the graph kind of structure. The data will be stored, okay? So this is what it is explained over here. So if you see document database means MongoDB is the main thing over here. Graph means Neo4j and key value pair, it is Redis, but mostly key value pair we are not using much. Person, uh, HBase we can say it as a key value or a white column or a columnar, we can call it anything, okay? So, so uh, something like that, okay? So we have these many databases in the market and more and more uh, NoSQL databases are available. Okay, so I'll just uh, quickly like, uh, uh, I will cover cloud computing. So I told you like, uh, why I have uh, cover, uh, put uh, cloud computing over here, right? So it's not like Hadoop is going to be environment, which is going to be in several Linux machine linked together or something like that, right? Uh, you have that uh, um, uh, Hadoop kind of environment. You have the data lake of uh, environment in the current cloud itself, AWS. S3 itself acts as a storage and it can be act as something like uh, 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 people are using S3 as a main storage and they are using it as a kind of a data like kind of environment. They are using AWS. So these kind of things are available. So what, what is a cloud, right? So cloud is nothing but like previously, if, if I am uh, running a project, right? Uh, uh, my company is running a project, they have a supply chain management system. They know like, they have 10 customers right now. The data will go will run from 1000 TB to maybe a GB kind of uh, TB kind of thing, maybe 1000 TB or 2000 TB or uh, something set up, right? Then uh, after that, you clean the data after three, four years because it's not needed. Again, it's coming to uh, 1000 TB or 2000 TB. Again, it goes, right? Now, in case of cloud computing, right? You have all the options over there. You have the previously you have to buy a machine which is on prem which is going to be very big to handle petabyte of data you are not looking into the initial stage initially it will be only 1000 tb right it is going to go for a petabyte of data but initially itself you need to buy that kind of storage you have to have some memory on prem is kind of like you have to do all sort of things initially it is going to be very uh, cost consuming right cloud is kind of it came to market, different purpose, right? The purpose is you, it will make you as a cost effective. Somebody holds that into, somebody holds their machine into their data center and they're giving you as a rent, right? So now you are going to first take them like, initially you are get the resources, very, um, very little resources from them and you are going to scale up again and again, right? So this way, right, you are going to be very cost effective. First you get, buy them only terabyte of uh, storage, then you go for petabyte, all these things are possible. Then first you go for a 24 GB RAM, you go for a two core, two core CPU or something like that. Then you go for a 16 core, you go for a 32 core, 
So you can enhance all these things, right? That is the first advantage of cloud computing. Okay. Then the second advantage over here, right? So you you have several things. You, you have infra as a service. So as I told, right? It's an infra as a service, right? Then you have a product as a service, right? Pass. So what is it? So if you go for AWS, right? You they put their uh, uh, databases. Oracle and all those things, right? They put it as a product and give it to the customer, right? Uh, so the RDS kind of relation database environment, they have uh, MySQL, they have Postgres, everything they have products inside it. And they have several other products also. They have EC2, they have storage mechanism, they have EMR, and then Elastic Gambler, that is Hadoop kind of environment. They have Spark, they, they give you all the products, right? This is the second thing. Then the third thing also is there, right? You have SaaS. You have, you know about the SaaS, right? The software as a service that is also picking up in the market, right? So software as a service is nothing but uh, yeah, they build the software and give it to you, right? Uh, the some of them is uh, uh, you Salesforce is one of them, and um, same thing, right? Uh, uh, you you have several uh, softwares also. They are also going for a service. It's a kind of rental thing, right? Uh, they, they, these are some of the buzzwords right now. And cloud computing supports all these uh, things, right? So, okay. So, currently also, right? Um, uh, you have several uh, SaaS kind of products are coming into market, right? You have the fresh desk and all those things also came into market recently. Like, uh, Recently, not came into market, but uh, came into the stock market, right? Okay. So, uh, AWS different components will have a different session for that. So, I already explained you. So, S3 is for the storage. EC2 is also a storage, but it's kind of a Linux kind of thing. And you have EMR, Elastic Map Reduce, which is kind of Hadoop environment. And different databases, we call it as RD, RDS over there. And you have several uh, different uh, paths, right? Uh, your products as a service. Okay. You have you can also do like several things over there. You have can do cloud watch and all. You can monitor how much uh, you are uh, how much you are process, how much you are using, and all those things you can do over there. All these things are there. And AWS is complete management. You can do it, give it actually security wise, which machine from outside can access you and uh, different kind of things like privately you can use it publicly you can use it all sort of things are available right okay i'll just quickly explain you what is iu okay so big data i told you different uh, big data kind of thing you derive data from different things yeah you also derive data from the devices right currently also in telecom industry, if you see, right, there are multiple devices. You have layer one, layer two, layer three. So multiple, seven layers of telecom, right? Multiple devices in different layers. So you have software embedded in those devices. It pulls you data, and based on the data, you can find out like whether that uh, particular device, whether it is in good condition or it is in bad condition, what kind of thing. All these things can be derived, and all this teaming can be done. You can find out what analytics you can do. So whether the data is in proper manner and all those things, yeah, or device is in proper manner, all those things. In case of IoT, right, I've just given example, right? It is coming into industry for different things right now it is coming, right? So uh, it's kind of, you you have devices, home devices or something. Take a, a fridge in your uh, home, right? Your, uh, your fridge comes up with the Wi-Fi enabled, right? And, what all sort of uh, things happening in the fridge, in fridge right? How much cooling and uh, how, how, how much cooling it went up or down, or, or all sort of things. And uh, if there is a damage, there is a sound, all is uh, actually um, uh, figured out and it is sent to the internet, right? Then you find all those things and then uh, whether the fridge is in good condition or not, and all those things you are going to uh, find out, right? So the data is going to the internet from the device. So it comes to there in all kind of devices, right? So you might see light of a lot of Google kind of things, right? Alexa and all those things. Like it's kind of manually, you can say like switch on the light, switch on the computer, switch on something, something, something. Okay. 
and uh, security wise right uh, you do um, lot of your security doors and all like um, from the app you can uh, just uh, enable that and open the door and all those things are come right but once you put that in the internet and you actually uh, going and uh, uh, right uh, opening the door or something like that and you just put it in the different do lot of analytics and do all sort of things right that is going to be the iot is the main thing right now it's happening right now smaller manner we are coming into the picture right so we have sensors right if you see in uh, some of the um, buildings right so if you go out of a room or something your know, the uh, light automatically goes out uh, based on the sensors they derive it but if you put the data into internet and use it for a different purpose you control the lights or you control your different purposes right these are all the iot things which is going to come in the future right so several markets it is evolving right now so home home i told right home totally it is in another 10 15 years when be like 50 to 50, 60% of the home it might not be luxury kind of thing it might come as a normal way and you have several industry industry wise also right uh, you have the machines machines are connected to internet and all sort of uh, um, uh, things right uh, the, how the machine is functioning and all the things you can see automobile industry so right now also right you you can find out like um where the where you you have different ways to find out the, where your uh, particular car is going in and all the things you have match and all the things. So then derive the data, you can find out like whether it will rain today or something like that. All those things in the internet, right? Your traffic jams, whether it will, uh, the traffic will uh, be huge in the evening. You can derive it before, right? Uh, based on the previous data and all those things. And IoT, based on IoT, the, the data is collected, right? So they are putting it into different areas. So here you can see I have put it in the document, right? So I'm just giving it an example. I told you the home automation, right? So they have given an example, right? Your kettle can be programmed like when it is too heat, it automatically goes down. That you can do it. You can uh, operate the kettle through your app or something, right? You, there are different ways to do that. But once you put the data into the internet, right, it becomes IoT kind of thing. So you can derive a lot of advantages based on that. And your voice kind of uh, things, you voice speech recognition, voice recognition, your, uh, uh, all those things are going to come, right? The future is going to be VR, AR, so you know, right, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, reality. So we will have a separate session for that. So these are some of the things, right? Most of the things are based on the data. So home automation, as I told you, printer, your lights, your camera, all mobile phone, all data is going to be stored in somewhere else and we are going to do analytics over there, right? So this is kind of home automation. So next thing is the traffic control. This is somewhere it, it is being implemented. Most of the places might be in abroad and all. So it's kind of thing, right? So you have seen, right? Like if the in the afternoon time, your traffic is very low. At that time, your uh, uh, your traffic signal, the timing will be uh, very low. Like every five seconds, it will open or something. But if the traffic is very high, right? In the evening time and all, it will open at 60 seconds once only, one board will be open. So how they are forming that, right? Uh, so these are all comes through. The data is uh, actually like collected based on the data, they do the analysis, right? So the traffic jam is happening, right? So based on the data they collect, it will directly go to the control room and they will find out uh, how much, uh, uh, how the traffic is there based on that, they will regulate all the other things. So these are some of the things in the traffic industry, right? So these are uh, evolving things right now. Right, so I have put one connection, right? So how the camera it collects uh, the data, right? Your uh, mm, machine learning kind of thing, and it puts over directly through the fiber. It comes to the control room. You and uh, do all sort of analysis over there, right? 
Okay, I want to just cover digital transformation over here. So if we take a session on big data, cloud and all, IoT and all, digital transformation, if I am not covering it, it won't be good. So what is digital transformation? So every company is putting into a, it's uh, all their um, coming through digital technologies and they are implementing, right? So based on that, they are increasing their revenue. So if you see here, Google is coming with several dot of things in the AI, right? They are more and more, uh, they are advancing on the deep learning models. I will explain you on the deep learning. Okay? So then uh, all these are implemented. Yeah, I gave you an example on chatbot, right? How the advertising is coming simultaneously, right? And cloud, cloud. So it's not digital, digitalization, it's not coming like digital transformation means you have to do only AML or cloud or big data. No, it's not like that. So if you are doing everything in a paper, right? You are going from a paper to a kind of a computer kind of thing, right? For a future use, because that's what sort it of happened, right? In the current uh, situation, um, based on our work from home situation and all. So this was very efficiently coming over. So these are all digital transformation increasing the revenue on the company in the future based on the new digital technology right we'll have a separate uh, session for that so if you see here all these things are coming which is virtual reality your augmented reality 3d printing it comes with the augmented reality cloud is there drones so drones is mostly used right now so in the telecom uh, it's used in efficient way right uh, so uh, it, it acts as a Telecom tower, right? Drones are using uh, tower itself with this acting. And so all these things are come from the digital transformation, right? So q and uh, I think uh, we have time. Uh, you can just ask questions for a few minutes and then we'll close the question. I think uh, anybody have any questions? Sure, Patty, it was a great presentation. This is Javed from Chicago. So would you mind just brief on the difference MongoDB and Cassandra? Like you explained, MongoDB is document-oriented, whereas Cassandra was a wide column. Okay. Uh, MongoDB, when the storage uh, kind of a thing, right, it's kind of a JSON. You know JSON, right? How yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So if you have an employee and you are a department kind of data, right? It's a kind of, I assume what is a JSON, right? The same document uh, thing, it is stored inside, okay? So I'm not specific about uh, uh, how it is uh, um, internally, how we are retrieving and all those things, because MongoDB I have not used much. But if you take in the Cassandra side, right? The data uh, storage is differently in uh, Cassandra, okay? So they call it as partitioning. How it is stored? It is not stored as a table, rows and columns, okay? They call right. the data as a partitioning, right? So if you have three columns as your primary key, right? Based on your, uh, might be like employee number and uh, uh, you have the data, right? So, so employee number in another one is a key, just giving an example. You take employee number as a partition key and you have a employee number, another one as a primary key, okay? So based on the partition key, they will store the data, okay? So in different nodes, okay? So one partition will be having one uh, employee ID kind of data. Another partition will be having another employee ID kind of data. So it will be having different uh, nodes, might be like, they call it as a key space, right? So based on the key space, they will define what are the different uh, nodes over there, right? And they will store all the partition data over there in the Cassandra. And while they retrieve, right, uh, it will go for a particular partition when you hit that, okay? We are saying the employee ID, it will one, it will go to the that particular node and it will get the data. It's a kind of a different story. I will explain you a uh, separate section. Like, I am well versed in the Cassandra kind of thing. I can give you a overall presentation, like how we are retrieving the data and how far. Only disadvantages I said is consistency and the uh, joins and all won't be there. So in the OLTP kind of application, if you want to take it right, you cannot do it over here. I'll take a separate session internally, like what different data uh, NoSQL does and how the data is stored inside. 
and how you can retrieve the data. Might be like one NoSQL I will cover in uh, fully, and other uh, NoSQL I will just give it in the whole year. Is it okay, Jared? No, definitely, because in Cassandra, because, you know, of course, you do shards of partitions, right? And let's say if they have 10 nodes, all 10 nodes going to be work as a master, right? So data is replicated across all the nodes. So yeah. there's a least, there's no failure of what is called single point of failure. So there's no chance of failure at all. So that's kind of resilience you have. MongoDB, yes, that's a kind of um, document over here to be populate into JSON format, yes. Uh, how we organize the data across the node, so that part I'm not clear. So I was thinking if you could yeah, use yeah, maybe yeah. next session. So that kind of a data model uh, kind of thing, how the data is stored, how the data is retrieved, right? Uh, we need to uh, look into it very clearly, then only we can see the advantages. So sure. maybe like I will put the both and I will just uh, show together actually how the data is prepared so that we can. We will uh, have deal with three through three new SQL and database HBase, MongoDB as well as Cassandra. Yeah, yeah, okay. I will put that together and we will have a separate. Session. Yeah, so that will be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, to add to that, in uh, MongoDB, what usually we do is uh, you know there will be a cluster by itself and then. Uh, the failover we can define, you know, you can have like round robin or, uh, you know, different kind of failover where there can be multiple, uh, one can be the primary, you know, used, you know, normally used for, uh, uh, you know, writing. And then the other databases like, uh, you know, the uh, backup kind of uh, concepts where uh, one plus two kind of redundancy, right? So one can be for writing and two can be for reading. So you should sure. search and other operations like so you should be form kind of faster, you know, in, if you go for document DB, RDS in AWS and other thing, right? We have to define you know the type of cluster in order to have the you know flowers and high availability, not like right. Cassandra. Cassandra internally has all this uh, built in, but in uh, MongoDB we have to define the cluster, what type of failover you want and other things. Like if right. I right. we can discuss fully in detail also. Sure, yeah. That would be a very interesting topic. And one thing I'm wondering is, uh, you know, what is the future, right? See so, you now, you know, we have day by day, so much of data is coming in and then, uh, you know, cloud technologies and distributed, uh, you know, computing, data lakes, delta lakes, and so many things, right? So uh, I don't know, you know, what will be the final stage, like you see, a lot of things are going with digitization, automation, other things, right? So, what will be the kind of automation that is going to be in this big data space? I mean, just a, any thought process. So, I can come into uh, Ashraf um, because you have might have heard the uh, phrase "data is a new oil," right? Yes. Data is growing exponentially. We not talk about terabyte nowadays. We talk when peta petabytes. Right. So luckily we got uh, this uh, big data Hadoop where you have a scalability, you have a um, way to optimize and reduce the cost because you are using um, what you call um, uh, the storage or computing, right? So this all commodity hardware you're using, right? So Hadoop or behind the scene, big data provide all kind of redundancy. And uh, like uh, Paddy just explained, the cost of uh, compute power and storage is going down. So that is great. On top of you have ability to utilize commodity hardware. So you can you know, reduce uh, the cost and improve the performance day by day. So the opportunities are growing fast and that's really high. Make sense? Yeah. And uh, Paddy, is it a, you know, do you have any like real time, uh, uh, any use case, right? Where uh, is it possible to showcase maybe, you know, next time? I mean, like not in the office that and all, something we can uh, put it in uh, AWS and other things, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, AWS, I can, I can show some real time use cases, okay, so whatever. Is there? I can just put it and show it. So how? But we need to integrate all those things. Yes. 
you can do that uh, using AWS. So how the data comes uh, from a chat bot again to a particular web application. This kind of thing is a major use case. Like every uh, person doing MS row in US, right, is using this kind of use cases and is coming up with this kind of projects. And so and that will be good. So we have the tools which is embedded in AWS. The Kinesis, your Lambda, and uh, you have uh, Spark, and you have S3. So then you come together, you have put it into database, RDS, then you come and put it into again into the web application. So it will be good, but uh, if you have time, we'll uh, come together and I'll put those kind of things and, and I can explain it. Yeah, sure. I think we can try probably another time. No, no, definitely that will be very interesting. And I was thinking like if everybody could have their own uh, AWS account because uh, Amazon provide you one year free, right? So I had account, I did some kind of uh, hardware works, so, you know, uh, configuration there. Uh, I did five years back. So maybe we can have our own account. Uh, Paddy, you can show us one use case and maybe we can try our own. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, as, uh, everybody knows like, yeah, that uh, EMR, right? Uh, Elastic map to do the same kind of Hadoop environment. Maybe hot and most of cloud environment we have in your on frame or EC2, right? Uh, so we have the same kind of environment inbuilt together. We'll create one environment, might be in next session or something, and I can show the question how it looks. So, how the so that will be great. Yeah, and buddy, you know what? Uh, just a very general question. Uh, Hortonworks and Cloudera, they were very big at one time, but Cloudera eventually bought Hortonworks. And that's kind of uh, nervousness around the industry. Look like uh, people are just doing POC around big data, but they are not really productionizing and operationalizing uh, their application of the system. So, what do you think? Yeah, that's right. I see. Uh, the art and works are free, right? Uh, Cloudera, once they uh, uh, actually like, they took over art and works, right? That is a right. industry wide, like what the next will happen. But in most of the companies, right, might be like, they are uh, having like multiple nodes or something. They don't use the uh, actual uh, Cloudera or art and works uh, kind of uh, uh, things. Actually, they go for a, a manual thing only right now also. So I don't think major industries will hit over that, but small, small companies, yes, uh, the free uh, thing won't be there. They also go to be manual and uh, efficiently they should handle that environment. Hadoop might be very, uh, Hartanos uh, might be very easy handling, but uh, if you go for a manual thing, then you need to go for a different uh, uh, kind of mechanism. You need to do all the installation manually all the things you need to do. The control is also is going to be uh, manual central question, I would say. The distribution right. gave us a very good advantage. Actually. True. Actually, in Walgreen, we did Hardware Works and uh, one, I worked for one financial company. Uh, they had a cloud data. Okay. Yeah. So not that much, so that's one company, so it depends on what uh, you're implementing. I HD don't know, like, uh, like, uh, how, uh, because they merged, uh, uh, the Cloudera is going to have some, uh, um, actually they are going to give uh, Hortonworks uh, uh, in an uh, efficient manner, like economically they are going to do uh, in future, or uh, how they are going to do, we are not uh, sure. Right, 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 yeah. And the EMR does the same thing, right? Or is it uh, again using one of the stack? Sorry? Yeah, you know, AWS, you know, we have EMR and other things, right? EMR is costly. The problem with the EMR is uh, one thing is if you use EMR, right, you can go for other tools like Spark, but you need to go by their internal tool, S3, and all those things. The outside thing, you need to merge it, right? And then it's going to be very difficult, right? The same thing with Google also, like you need to go by their uh, standard thing, outside tools if you are going to go, then BigQuery and all those things which is embedded to Google Cloud, we need to use it, otherwise it's going to be difficult, we need, there are a lot of things we need to do, right, uh, to evolve our uh, actual outside uh, tools and all. Same thing in AWS also, if you use EMR, 
the problem will come we need to go by the overall amazon thing emr is costly and the other one is uh, the shutdown mechanism and all those things right uh, emr you cannot uh, go on shutdown for a certain period for as we do for ec2 and kind of thing right so these are all several uh, disadvantages also we have yeah okay yeah. What we do is uh, we actually use EMR only for scaling purpose, right? So only for running the process we use EMR. So when we run the Spark job, right, uh, we automatically scale a EMR and do all the processing. Once uh, it is done, right, uh, no other job is there. We automatically go and close the EMR so that the cost won't be there. Cost will be minimal. That is what the companies are using that mechanism right now. Okay. It's a completely the storage is going to be S3, not going to be EMR, right? So it, it, this way, like we have a cost effective. Okay. Yeah, add, yeah, adding yeah, here, my guess, adding to this EMR concept, right? So suppose uh, in this EMR, suppose we are not using the Hive database, okay? The for cost effective. Whenever we want to access the job uh, execution, then at that time we can create the new EMR. Okay, and after job execution, we can uh, close that EMR. Whenever we require that, we can create the new EMR. So suppose we are going with that uh, depend on the Hive database, then we can't do like that. But we are going with that S3, and uh, only we do the in-memory processing. Then in this case, then we can go with that EMR on the fly, and after job execution, we can destroy that EMR. So that's uh, that's what we can. Uh, eliminate the cost effective method. So not the added value. It will be similar uh, to almost. Google uh, also does, right? We can have like a lifetime, we can make a, uh, you, know, a sequence, you know, like a time frame, or you can have one API and then uh, pass the data for it. And then uh, it yeah, yeah, cost right. everything, you know. Because as Paddy mentioned, that EMR is very, very costly. So that's what uh, one of the project uh, is not using that uh, Hive database. Then whenever you get to, we need to start the process. So at the time creating the EMR, we do the processing and final data stored in the RDMS or Postgres. So after uh, loading the data in the Postgres, we destroy that uh, EMR. So whenever required, then we can automatically create the EMR through the process. That's what uh, we can go with that. Suppose we are thinking about the cost effective method. But it will be, see, if it is a real time, no? It's a real time that, uh, or even as, you know, short batches and all, right? Uh, switching on and off of the environment. No, 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 suppose, yeah, yeah, correct. Suppose you're thinking about that uh, millions of billions of data you want to do the processes in America, right? Mm -hmm. So at that time, suppose you can't maintain that all the scaling and uh, we can't maintain all the server. So that's what Paddy explained. So we can maintain the, uh, uh, that for the batch processing, for example, we want to do the billions of rows, we want to do all kind of massaging and all, then do our run, run time, then we can close the EMR. For talking about that real time, then in the time that we can think about the different use case. Suppose you want to do with the very cost effective method, we can think about this one. Right? You want to add something? Uh, are you asking me, Asha? Uh, yeah, you want to add something? <laughs> No, uh, no, 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 uh, no. Good talk, by the way. And um, what I was, I would like to add is um, from the, the field that I'm coming from, uh, this is an important topic for all the people because in terms of machine learning data science world, uh, data is so crucial and what they say, garbage in, garbage out. Um, so the data, all the data processing tools that has been discussed today, EMR and other big data technologies is so crucial in that area as well. So the role of data engineers essentially, yeah. I think you people can give one presentation as well. I think <laughs> the way this working in uh, EPL and uh, you know data warehouses for a long time. And there we go, you are into ML in healthcare and all. So we can schedule uh, you know another Sunday whenever mm -hmm. you are free. You know, 
at least you know we can discuss many things and then whatever we know right we can exchange yeah absolutely so ashraf i would suggest uh, maybe next sunday uh, if we can bring some expert up from machine learning and uh, ai yeah, and yeah. that use case we can see because data science utilizes data engineering right yes i mean they need to they need each other yeah you know we are actually kind of uh, you know jack of all and then uh, <laughs> you know master of nothing like kind of thing right so uh, you know i think devika is here she is from my ml background but you know mainly uh-huh. she was into you know health care earlier now she is into financial sector nice so maybe she can uh, give uh, you know some talk maybe next week yeah um, um i will i'll talk to you ashraf um, i have a another presentation do next week or yeah, job yeah. wise Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll discuss. Yeah, you're not being a candidate, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm just telling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So, anybody else? Ajish, you want to add something? No, oh, stuff. Because I, I think it was actually it was a new topic for me because I'm not into any big data or something like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Because I am into more into the credit card processing, and that, so I'm taking care of the master visa schemes and all these things. So it's actually it's, it was a new thing for me. So anyway, good topic. So nice discussion. So happy to learn something new. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else? Mahesh, want to add something? yeah i think uh, we are good uh, because uh, because we want uh, suppose in this case that continuous session want to big data and what is the real use cases yeah. then maybe we can have uh, one more uh, session as well. okay because as yeah, as, in, as Paddy mentioned that aws how we can utilize what is the real use cases then we can think about this yes actually you can as if you if you are not in the whatsapp group you can just uh, give me your uh, uh, you know for chat or something no you can give the contact details so that i can uh, get in touch with you with you okay yeah okay ashraf uh, one question to you um i know we have been talk uh, i uh, maybe focus more on the software side of it i think i myself i'm also curious um i think you are coming from iot background um to lo- learn more about the devices in the iot space the hardware devices if somebody can uh, speak to it some day yeah uh, actually see i worked in iot projects like a smart city projects which are you know, <laughs> you know the device is basically generating the data that much only we have and mm. then, uh, there are some uh, you know all these blocks are getting collected and uh, you know because of that blockchain it is highly secure so the devices are all over in us europe all over and they mm-hmm. are building that uh, in blocks and the iot has something called the lora van kind of uh, you know protocol where mm-hmm. the device can send the data to you know 3 km around that other device some other device will listen to the whatever the you know one device is sending and so mm-hmm. there will be some election something and all between the uh, you know possibility who to forward it to the next node kind of thing right mm-hmm. so what basically happening inside the device is more uh, again you know some algorithm software and data and all that things the hardware actually the real hardware part is uh, you know we also not uh, you know much involved mm-hmm. uh, what we are all worried is the data now for us the data is coming a very you know one hour we are getting 2 gb 3 gb worth of data yeah uh, you know there are so much information we cannot even process yeah right uh, it is not worth it to even process so uh, you know we are always getting challenges in when it comes to data data volume and data veracity and everything right mm. the actual device are there from how you know it works <laughs> i don't know the yeah. many issues but from how it works you know you, you know i recently come across a guy actually 
uh, he is from in Kerala only. He's doing something on IoT space devices. So I was curious what he actually does. I don't know him that much to kind of invite him or do anything in the show, but I'm the end of probably what is Jitu's, maybe Jitu is a good uh, candidate to talk about that. Yeah, they are actually, you know, manufacturing or doing the devices. So uh-huh. asking him to give a presentation. But the crowd, you know, our crowd, I don't know how much people will be interested to that type of low level. That is uh-huh. also comfortable. You know, a lot of people are into IT, you know, very high level kind of thing. But definitely, yeah. we can have one, you know, at least one hour, we can ask him to you know, present the technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are so many devices nowadays. And in Bangalore, there are, uh, you know, more than 100 companies manufacturing you know, mm. the related devices, wearables and other things. Mm-hmm. And mm. the companies which are now coming like a boat and all, no? coming number one in the world. <laughs> mm. In terms of, uh, you know, the audio devices and other things, right? So there are possibilities. So I think we'll, uh, we'll ask you to one day. So, oh, no, mostly the devices uh, kind of uh, thing, right? Uh, the... If you take uh, currently, like most of the devices, uh, telecom devices, and all, it comes from with their own software or their own database. So, from their database, we just uh, pull the data to the API kind of thing. So, that is where we are doing right now. So, it's kind of like they have the overall mechanism in the devices. So, mm-hmm. right now in telecom, you see, right now it is evolving. We have something uh, like in 5G and all, cloud computing is also there. So all the devices goes to the edge node, we have the net concept, right? Uh, so those edge node thing, we, in that device, cloud, they are collecting the data and using for the analytics purpose. So it is also evolving right now, but uh, we can see something actually, how it is coming in, but uh, we also in the telecom industry don't know like how the data is coming. Once they give the data, we process. That is what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, that is one area probably we can, uh, we can explore. That is a good point, actually. Yeah, just to, just because in the end, just to, to follow that end-to-end flow, you know, mm-hmm. this is where it starts and this is where it ends. End-to-end, end-to-end data flow we can show, <laughs> but from the device side, you know, that's what I was asking. Is it possible to have a real-time uh, because see, I can just uh, show now, you know, the, our devices are sitting all over the you know, US and they're sending data and then I can see whether offline, online, all things. And how we process all this data, we can show. But, uh, you know, the actual thing, what is really happening is, uh, again, uh, like uh, Freddie mentioned, now we are getting kind of a state or whatever, you know, some way the data is being ingested into our uh, pipelines mm-hmm. and uh, processing. And that end-to-end we can do, but the uh, real device, how they are being uh, done and what is the state flow mechanism, uh, you know, whether something goes faulty, that type of thing we have not, I mean, at least I haven't gone too much into. Yeah, it is actually funny. In um, one of my previous job, um, a data scientist, uh, her algorithms actually, we send it out to an iPad and display it in an iPad in a certain, um, you know, push messages. So when when someone you during one demo, uh, when I showed this as a demonstration piece, she was that was the first time she is that my algorithm doing it. So she was doing all this background work. Then we take the recommendation and then you know massage it, and make it very user friendly, and show it in an iPad as a notification piece. And uh, she was surprised uh, that it was her algorithm. Yeah. Anyway, nice talk, by the way. Uh, very detailed. Anybody else? Okay. So I think we are good for this week, uh, Shraf. Uh, maybe we can wrap it up and plan for next Sunday. Yeah. And this is a really good session. Yeah. Very interesting. Sure. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Paddy. So we'll, uh, I think uh, you keep coming in. So I think we'll have, uh, we'll schedule based on the availability of, uh, you know, other people as well. Yeah. The only problem is, uh, you know, we, I don't know how we make things much simpler, right? <laughs> we all talk about our uh, high-fi technologies and a lot of things. 
but uh, it should be like a more uh, you know if i for example right if i start talking i may not be able to make it uh, very simple in such a way that uh, you know i mean like people can understand from other streams right that is a thing. like if you are talking about a uh, adobe itself uh, inside the map reduce and other algorithms and since we are aware of it we will be easily getting how the distribution happening you know how it can scale right how the compute is reduced and all that things we know that right but somebody who is new they may not have that picture they may be wondering how you know that 2000 hadoop cluster can make a massive thing right and then do things in parallel so that uh, it will be like that itself is a point by itself uh, you know how it is happening right that real parallelism <laughs> the scalability is yeah yeah like okay. we need to go in the actually right take one thing and go in the yes. and we need to show them how it is happening you know the people from different background you know they might get a little uh, they may not understand also that's about yeah yeah, yeah. Right, right correct we'll keep uh, you know we'll try to do the same way and then eventually i think you talked a lot of things right iot cloud and uh, you know big data everything and uh, again different uh, you know technologies let's go and other <coughs> and can we get this ppt if possible i am actually recording this also so mostly yeah. i am thinking it will be recorded somewhere and the ppt is also with us that will be great yeah so eventually you know for our internal reference at least we can uh, sure yeah okay so thank you all so we are almost thanks good. everyone yeah Thank you, Paddy. Uh, we'll meet next week. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.